This is why and how to find emotional healing part three. In case you're joining me for the first time, I'm so happy you have chosen to visit and get an understanding on emotional healing and why it is important to you as an individual. I know you have been in relationships, you could be in a relationship at the moment, but when it comes to emotional health and emotional healing, it has to begin by an individual. When you're okay emotionally, it is easier to help another person because two blind people cannot lead one another. Two sick people don't need a relationship. They need a relationship that will help one of them to get better, right? So I'm happy you're here. So let's dig deep into this subject. At a glance, after you've gone through something painful, difficult, traumatic, or life-changing, it's essential to heal your mind as much as your body. The emotional healing process takes time, and it looks different for each person. Regardless of what you are healing from, taking steps like practicing self-compassion, practicing mindfulness, caring for your body, and trying therapy can help. Let's take a closer look at why emotional healing is so important and the steps you can take to recover emotionally from life challenges. So what is emotional healing? Well, emotional healing is, a, is the process of number one, acknowledging, two, allowing, three, accepting, four, integrating, five, processing, painful life experiences and strong emotions. It may involve empathy, self-regulation, self-compassion, self-acceptance, mindfulness, and integration. So you are watching this. When you look back down to your childhood life, you've gone through experiences, traumatic experiences. Some were very emotionally traumatizing. Some pushed you to the rock. Some just disorganized the way you view your, your perspective in life. So emotional healing is about going back. And now with this new understanding, you process. First of all, you look at every experience and you truly have to admit mentally, emotionally, and spiritually that indeed that incidence, that traumatic experience, that emotional abuse, that em child emotional neglect did actually happen. And then you also allow, you're not denying it, you're allowing and you can tr see the effects it has had on your emotional, mental conditioning, and basically how you've interacted with the world and with other people. Then, of course, you go to um, the processing, which is now looking at everything that happened to you, but this time with the intention of shifting from I am a victim to I am in touch. When this happened, when this traumatic incidents, experience happened. Indeed, you could have been in a disadvantaged position. Take a case of a child versus a parent. If a child is emotionally abused by the parent, it's the parent who in this case is on an advantageous position. It is superior, inferior kind of a relationship. So then you are a victim as a child. Because world over, children don't have much to do because they are in the hands of the parents. It's the parents who really takes care of them and decides what they can do with their lives and all that stuff. And 
when that incident happened, your brain went into that mode of victim 